just get looking, say, wait one minute. All right. The word of the Lord reads, start children off on the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Uh, we know that the King James Version says, train a child in the way they should go. And when they are old, they will not turn from it. The first part of that is a principle and a proverb. And then the second part is a promise. Principle is start off a child in the way or train a child. And uh, I like it, it says train a child, but then uh, the NIV is helpful because it says start a child. So in other words, you have to train a child, but the quicker you start, the better. It'd be good if you start at the beginning. But, 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 but listen, if your children are older and sometimes we come to the Lord a little later in life and we're trying to get it together, it's never too late. God can still use you to influence them. Anybody know I'm right about it? But the Bible says, verse 6, start or train up a child in the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Uh, anybody in here ready to claim the promise of God? Y'all ready to claim the promise of God? All right, all right watch this. Does, is there anybody in here, watch this, that desires the promise of God? And that is, watch this, that when your children are old, they'll learn how to trust God for themselves. Anybody claim that? Anybody? Is that what you want? Is that what you want? So he made a promise. He'll, he'll do that for you. He, it's a guarantee. But it comes with a responsibility. He says that your responsibility is to train. And his responsibility is that if you do that, he'll develop for you a child that will learn how to lean and love him, lean on him and love him when they are old. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord, more faithful parenting. Verse 6 says that God's goal for parents is to train up a child in the way they should go. And then the promise is when they get old, they won't depart from it. If you're going to be a more faithful parent, the first thing uh, to get right is you need to understand your job assignment from the Lord in regards to your child. Amen. Your job assignment from the Lord in regards to your child. The first thing um, you need to understand, you are not their friend. Amen. You are, you are not their friend. And you, you know, some of y'all, y'all want to be friendly. I know that you're still so young and cute that people tell you, girl, you look just like your daughter's sister. I know you look like their sister, but you're not their sister either. Amen. You know? You're not their friend. You're not their sister. Y'all don't need to go to the club together. Can I get an amen? You, you are their, you're their parent. And the text tells us as a parent, this is your real role. You're their trainer. You're their developer. God has given you the responsibility to, in the very earliest possible, in the very beginning stages, to start to develop and to train them in the way they should go. And so let me make some clarification to that. So God is saying you're their trainer to develop them in the way he wants them to go. Because his word, him and his word is your manual for how to train them. Train them up in the way that God wants them to go. Can they get an amen? Now we know as a parent and a trainer, you are the leader. You are the leader in the house. And we know that as leaders, you can't make anybody do anything. You can't make anybody do anything. I, I thank God that uh, God has called me to be a leader, but I thank God that you have decided to allow me to be your leader. But as your leader and your pastor, I can't go to your house and knock on your door and wake you up in the morning and, and make you come to church. Can I get an amen? I, I, it's nothing I, I can't do it. All I can do is try to do my best to lead well enough that you would want to follow. And a quick principle about leadership, leaders have to get out front first. We love the Lord because he first loved us. He was a leader. He did it first. And so if you're going to lead your children, you need to just get out front. And you need, if you want them to be faithful children, the best way to do that is to start being a more faithful parent. And if you're going to be a more faithful parent, <clears throat> you need to become a more faithful person. <clears throat> Anybody know I'm right about it? Because the best way you lead your child is by example. They will listen to about 10% of what you say and do the 90% of what you do. 
Can I get an amen? And the worst thing we can do to violate this principle that God has given us is by being hypocritical. Amen. The Bible says don't exasperate your children. Don't, don't be a hypocrite. Don't tell them one thing and do another. That's the worst. That's the worst thing. You're just going to help them to not see value in God they, and, and, and get them, when they become old, they're not going to want to have anything to do with God because they felt you were playing around with God. And so we just, come on, y'all. This is real this is real talk. Amen. Come on. Anybody want some good children? Y'all want some strong, faithful children? Learn how to trust God? All right. And so it's all good. We got to have this real talk. We got to have this real talk. Uh, we want to have more faithful parenting in 2022. All right. <clears throat> um, we can give you this and teach it to you as a principle, but as your leader, God has sent me here to give you leadership by example. And we are just, First Lady and I are just very, very grateful that we have grown children that God's promise has been provided. So we have grown children that want to serve and love God and lean on God for themselves. And we're just very grateful. And you need to understand how much of a relief that is when your children love God for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Take the stress out of life. Anybody know I'm right about it? And look, and, and, I, and we make it open. We make it open. We make it open. We have a daughter in college, and she called us 2 in the morning. Hey! We was like, okay. Can I get an amen? We, we woke up and had a conversation. But we, look, we don't care what time it is. We're always available. And so we're thankful that they trust us enough to value our opinion and want to have conversation with us and, and want to have our opinion in their lives and all of that. But that's good. But it's even more important when we know that they value the Lord's opinion and not only will they call us up, but they'll call him up and talk to him and let him give them guidance. Oh, my God, we're just so grateful for that. But that's what we want for everyone. We want you to have grown children that love and trust God for themselves. All right. I'm going to recap some of the stuff that uh, we did last week. I won't have time to talk about it, so you can go on to the website or the app, and you can find it. If you didn't get part one, get that. Uh, but we'll talk about that. And we just went verse by verse. Verse one, verse one. We won't read the verse. You can read it for yourself. But the point was, reputation is better than riches. We don't have time to talk about that. But reputation is better than riches. I, oh, it's hard for me not to say something. Um, <laughs> reputation is better than riches. If you have a good reputation, it'll bring you riches. But it's, it doesn't even matter if you got riches and a bad reputation. Don't nobody steal one for you. Can I get an amen? All right. Rich and poor. Second, second verse. Uh, rich and poor need God. Rich and poor. I don't care who you are or where you are or what you got going on. It, it does not put you in a place where you're beyond God's need and his, uh, beyond needing God and beyond his help in your life. If you are rich, you need the Lord. If you're broke, you need the Lord. Everybody need the Lord. Amen. You're educated, you need the Lord. If, you, if you're successful, if you got money, you need the Lord. I don't care who you are, you need the Lord. Everybody needs the Lord. All right. Uh, third, third point we talked about, prudence over simplicity. Uh, the simple-minded will always get themselves in trouble, but you got to learn how to be prudent. And that, that means you just need to be wise. You need to be thoughtful. You need to be calculated. You need to think about what are the consequences of this decision that I make before I make the decision. And these are the principles. If we're raising our children, these are the principles we need to teach them when they are young. Be prudent. Be wise. Think about the results and the consequences of the choices you make before you even make them. Uh, fourth, uh, fourth point, humility is healthy. Humility is healthy. God loves those who are humble and he despises those that are proud. Anybody know I'm right about it? And I don't care who you are or what you have, you're no better than anybody else. If you got something going on, it's because God has been good to you and you need to realize that. And humility is one thing that we need to fight to have. Amen. Because something about the flesh, something about being human, we want to be prideful uh, because we're so competitive. We always want to be doing better than somebody else and be better off than somebody else. And we like to boss people around. But uh, turn to your neighbor and tell them, just humble yourself. Tell them, humble yourself. Humble yourself. Tell them, I will too. Amen. But, and watch this. And if you push, and hum humility is just making a determination to keep pushing yourself down. If you push yourself down, God will lift you up. But if you, live, if you exalt yourself, then God will humble you. Amen. All right. Uh, avoid wicked paths. Teach your children. Teach them, teach them all of this. Avoid wicked paths. Avoid wicked paths. It doesn't make any sense. You already know that everything they're doing down there is wicked. Amen. Ain't nothing holy going on down there. 
So why are you even getting on that path? Can I get an amen? Why are you even going down there? That's, that's good parenting. Don't even go down there. Don't even get involved. Don't even get started. Amen. Don't even, don't even go down there because even if you try it, it may become habitual to you. Oh, man, listen, I, I ain't really had time to talk about this, but um, I remember I grew up in the 80s, and I remember our friends, uh, my friends that I all grew up with, and uh, we just came from a community where kids kind of experimented with drugs, and it was very, very unfortunate, but they were playing around with some of them recreational ones until crack hit, and they didn't understand. They didn't know how to distinguish the difference, and I remember some of my friends, just one one experience, and they were just all the way done. Anybody know I'm right about? And so watch this. So the best thing to do is just to avoid wicked paths. So, some paths you can't play with. Some paths you don't come with. Some, some paths will take you farther than you want to go. Some paths will keep you longer than you wanted to stay. Some paths will cost you more than you wanted to pay. You just, some stuff, just stay off the wicked path. Like, all right, I know they're young and they're going to college and they want to party. And get, there is nothing good going on at the club. Can I get an amen? Anybody know I'm right about go to church? It's something good on that path. Can I get an amen? These, these are things. Come on. I mean, just, I, all, right, all right, this is just real talk. We need to teach this to our children. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't avoid, avoid a wicked paths. Um, six, reap God's promise. Reap God's promise, and that's what we talked about. His promise is that if you will raise them in the way that they should go, if you should train them in the way they should go when they get old, they will not depart from it, and it's a promise from God. You get to claim it by training them in the way they should go. Um, verse 7, verse 7, lending is better than borrowing. Lender is better than borrowing. Uh, you want to teach your kids that they, their goal should be to establish wealth. One quick point about finances. Save more than you spend. Don't spend it all. Save some of it. Can I get an amen? I threw a quick one in there for y'all as y'all sending y'all kids to college. Um, and so y'all just y'all just need this. Uh, uh, you go to college to make money, not to spend it. And so you go to college so that you can become more educated, so it can help you to have a better career, so you can make a, a larger salary. You go to school to make it, not to spend it. And sometimes we go to schools and we occur all of these loans that some people will never pay back in a lifetime. You won't be wealthy that way. You'll just be in debt all of your life. And, and listen, all of us have had to be in the place of the lender, but we want to get in the, pay, uh, be in the place of the borrower, but we want to get to the place one day where we're a lender. Uh, you can't be a lender have you, until you have something to lend. Can I get an amen? Anybody want to be in the place of a lender? Anybody want to be able to help somebody out that, that's in need, but how are you going to help them out if you don't have anything? And so lending is better than borrowing. Uh, justice over injustice, and we know we fight for uh, social justice, we fight for uh, justice in our world and all of that, but you need to teach your children from the very beginning to be people of justice. In other words, um, treat everybody fairly. You're not better than anybody else. Don't, don't consider race or it, uh, love everybody equally. Can I get an amen? That's, that's, all it, that's all justice is, is fairness. What's right for you is right for me. We all is balanced out. Nobody gets um, to be treated special, and, but we need to teach our children that from the very, very beginning. All right, so that's where we left off. And so now let's pick up for today, verse 9. Y'all ready? And we're going to walk our way through to verse 16, and we will be out for today. The These are the things to teach your children. This is your blueprint. Amen. Uh, it, it, verse 6 tells you what to do. It gives you the principle, it gives you the proverb, and then it gives you the promise. And then but it, verses 1 through 16 are all the different attributes. If you teach this to your children and you get it locked in them, boy, they'll have successful um, adult lives that glorify God. Come on, let's give God praise in advance. Amen. Come on. We, we, Lord, we're just claiming this for our children. All right, all right. Um, verse 9, the generous will themselves be blessed. For they share their food with the poor. Amen. Amen. And so our point is blessed are the generous. Blessed are the generous. Um, teach your children not to be stingy. But they always want to be a blessing to others. It's one thing to want to bless others verbally. But God is saying it's even better to bless some people monetarily, physically, because talk is cheap. It's what we do that shows really how we feel. The best way to express love to people is by giving them something. God so loved the world that he gave. And what did he give? His only begotten son. He was generous. 
When God gave it to us, he was generous. He gave us the best he had. He gave us all that we, and, and matter of fact, the son that he gave us was the fix all to all our problems. He was very generous, and when he gave to us, and when he gave to us, it was an expression of his love for us. And, and so watch this. Uh, we need to teach our children to be generous. Uh, always, when you see somebody in need, be a blessing to somebody that's in need. Sometimes we have extra, just, just be a blessing to them. If you see them and uh, they're they struggling, I mean, and I like to do that, and I thank God as a church we're in that position. I thank God uh, that as a person I'm in that position that I'm able to bless people. And first light, especially since the pandemic, God has heightened that in us. But whenever we go, we try to tip more. We're just, we're just trying to bless people. But we already know, watch this, even in your giving, you can't outgive God. And as a matter of fact, you're setting yourself up to be blessed by God because that's what he says. He, he blesses those that are generous. Oh, come on. Anybody know him right? Because when you are generous, you act like him. Oh, come on, somebody. Anybody know him right? Always look for an opportunity to be a blessing to somebody else. And, 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 and we're talking about monetarily, but even any, anyway, with encouragement, with love, just a, just a simple, kind word of bless somebody and, and make their day a little brighter, make their life a little better. Anybody know him right about it? But teach your children to learn how to be generous, to always have a heart to help those that are in need. That's what God has called us to do. And if you do that, God will put you in a place where you'll be blessed enough to be generous. Like you, you're, watch this, you're blessed for being generous, but then God will bless you for being generous. Can I, <laughs> come on, come on, somebody. Uh, uh, if you're generous, he'll give you some money to be generous with. Amen. That's all I'm trying to say. Now, it's interesting um, that we should never be stingy because what we understand as believers is that everything that we have really isn't ours anyway. We're just stewards over what's God's. So the interesting thing, if you're stingy, you're not even stingy with your own money. You're stingy with God's money. How? Look, it's messed up to be stingy with somebody else's money when they're the ones that gave you the money for the purpose of giving it to somebody else. But then when you get it, you say, no, I'm going to hold on to this God. And so that's why, so God can't bless that. He can't bless that. But if you're generous, God will bless you for being generous. If you want your children to be blessed as adults, teach them to be generous when they're small. And when they get old, they be generous when they get old. When you bring them to church, give them a dollar. Teach them how to start giving right now. They may not have a whole lot. And that'll be a tie to them because they give a dollar. That's, they tithe it. They giving, come on, somebody. Matter of fact, they better than 10%. They're giving 100% because they don't have no money. Amen. So just, <laughs> but give them some. Start them out now to get used to putting money in the church, trusting God, putting money in the plate, uh, giving a tithe and offer. Teach them these things now, and God will bless them for that later. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, we teach these to our children, they'd be good. All right, y'all ready? Verse 11. Verse 10, I'm sorry. Verse 10, thank you. Drive out the mocker, and watch this, and out goes strife, quarrels, and insults are ended. And so, teach your children, run from the troublemaker. Or... I'm going to give it to you. Even as a church, run out the troublemaker. Yeah. Yeah. Run them away. <laughs> we love them. We love them. But they have to start trying to make some changes. Can I get an amen? Yeah. And some of y'all looking at me strange. All right. Go back to your Bible. Let's read it again. It says, if they are a mocker, what should you do? Now, you don't even have to put them out. All you have to do is keep them from causing trouble because their whole goal is to cause trouble. So, and let me tell you one of the ways that we drive them out already here at the key because we have become so mature and we have so much unity and there's so much peace, they don't have anybody to go with them. They don't have anybody to join their club. They really don't. I'm just telling you. And, and, and just you being loving and being unified and being no nonsense, we don't do gossip. We don't do drama. We don't do insults. We don't do problems. We don't, we don't, come on somebody. We don't do chaos. We don't do that here. And so if you don't do that here, then those that are into that won't stay here. But teach this to your children. They know they got some friends, they just problematic. Run from them. Stay away from them. Can I get an Amen. Love them enough, try to help them, preach to them, talk to them, but don't hang with them. Like there's different levels of friendships. And so you can have an acquaintance where you could try to be there for them, but that don't mean that you do it with them. 
Be there for them and do it with them is two different things. Can I get an amen? Anybody know I'm right about it? Won't he do it? It says drive out the mocker. Watch this. And so uh, what's this idea of mocking? Mocking is somebody that has just chosen to disobey God. And some people have already just chosen in their mind that they are just not going to do what God tells them to do. And so what they're doing is they're mocking God. They're saying, God, uh, and, and they may not even acknowledge it, but they'll say it in front of you because they come to church. So they'll say, oh, God is good. God is good all the time. Um, but even though they'll tell you verbally God is good, his rules are not good enough for them to follow. So they have already determined they're not going to do anything that the Lord, they got their own ideas and their own rules. And so what they do with their lifestyle, they mock God. Now, if they mock God, they can't be a blessing to you. If they don't have it right with God, then they can't be helpful to you. If, if they're if they in a position of mocking God, they can't love you. So because, watch this, because they mock God, look in the text, look in the verse, it says they always cause strife. Because they're in a mocking relationship with God, they always causing quarrels. they is, they always keeping some arguments and fights going on. Because they mock God, all they do is give insults. They're, they don't encourage, they insult. Come on, y'all, 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 y'all. When a person's relationship is not right with God, their self-esteem is, is, is not, their comparison in life is not compared to the Lord. Their comparison in life is to people. So in order for them to feel okay about themselves, they got to feel like they're better than people. So even if they're not better than people, legitimately, then they, what they do is they'll verbally try to push people down so that they can fill up. Are y'all getting that? So they'll, so they'll insult you, and they'll insult you and defame you, and they'll try to belittle you. They'll try to push you down so they can feel better. Is that making sense? But the problem with all that, that where it starts at, is that they're in a mocking relationship with God. And so what he says, if you find somebody like that and they just determined they're not going to do what the Lord needs to do, drive them out. You push them away or you run away. But whatever, 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 whichever one you choose, get away. Because when they involve, all they're going to do is cause strife, quarrels, and insults. Those are the killers of unity and peace and organization and that's what God and listen and when you have a church that has a whole lot of peace unity and organization the power of Jesus has to be in it because it's humanly impossible to achieve so I'm just trying to tell you and if you haven't been around here just stick around here for a little while there are no big eyes a little use this is the most loving church and we work together as a team can I get an amen we all on one page we, we we're not all perfect but we all on one page can I get an amen and it's an amazing place and watch this and it's proof that God's hand has to be on it and it's just amazing that when we just decide we're not going to tolerate with mockers then it's amazing how things just move out amen. Amen. hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody know I'm right about it? Teach your, teach your kids to run from the mockers. Push them away or run away. Just get away. Because mockers kill love and unity. All right. Verse 11. Y'all ready? One who loves a pure heart and who speaks with grace will have the king for a friend. One who loves a pure, this is, and this is good stuff. Hey, man, teach this to your children. They're going to be off chain. If you teach them all this, they're going to be bad. They're going to be off chain. One who loves a pure heart and who speaks with grace. So they, they need to have a pure heart. They need to hang with people with a pure heart. They just need to love having a pure heart. And then when they speak, they need to be gracious when they're speaking. Amen. And if they do that, this is the promise, they will have a king for a friend. All right, um, verse 11. Y'all ready? Verse 11, this is my point for verse 11. The friendly have friends. If you want to have friends, show yourself friendly. Pastor, I don't have any friends because you're not that friendly. But if you'll be friendly, you'll get some friends. And if you're really friendly, you initiate friendships. Hello, how are you? My name is Barbara. What's your name? Well, bless you. 
uh, can I do something for you? Can I serve you? May I pray for you? May I be a blessing to you? Like if you show, come on, somebody, if you show yourself friendly and if, and if you're really a friend, you initiate friendships. Anybody know I'm right about it? If you, and, and watch this, and this, how, this is how you know you're friendly. You have a pure heart and you desire, you, 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 you love pure hearts. You love to be around people with pure hearts. You try to help people with corrupted hearts to have pure hearts. You, you're just in love with people. You just love in love with pure heartness. Amen. And then not only are you in love with pure, uh, pure heartness, um, you're gracious in your conversation. What is grace? Grace is when you give people what they don't deserve. You're always just trying to be a blessing. Watch this. Your conversation doesn't curse people. It blesses them. God gave your mouth to bless people with it, not to curse people with it. You don't put them down. You lift them up. You're encouraging. You're pos- Whenever they leave their presence, your presence, they just feel so much better. Come on. Anybody know I'm right about it? It's in the text. Can I get an amen? And God says, watch this, and if you are faithful to do with your mouth and your life and your heart what God desires for you, God says that he will give you some friends. And he says, and he'll give you some friends in high places. Yeah. 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 Woo! Look, you need to have some high place friends. You need to have friends on all levels. You need to have some that's kind of struggling, but you need to have some that got it going on. Just be friendly to everybody. Just have a pure heart. Just be gracious with everybody. Just try to love everybody. And I've learned to adopt that. And I tell you, it works for me. Not only does it work for me, it has worked for us. We would not be in this building. We would not be in this land if it had not been for a friend. We're here on a friend's hookup. But we would have never got hooked up if he wasn't my friend. But he wouldn't have been my friend if I didn't have a pure heart and a gracious mouth. And God said he'll give you some kingly friends. He'll give you, he'll give you some friends that can really bless you. He'll give you some friends that, and guess what? And oh, I just thought about this. And before he hooked us up with the land, because he just hooked us up. Yeah, I can't get into all the details. Um, one of my best friends had a member and a friend who was a developer in Foster Creek Business Park. And when I told him that was my vision where I wanted to be, he didn't even say nothing. And then the next time we had breakfast, this is what he said. I, I just thought about this. He said, we went to breakfast. He said, um, some people say they're your friend. I'm really your friend. That's all he said. He didn't even tell me. They didn't even tell me they was going to do it. They, and I don't even know how they found my realtor. They just called my realtor. And then my realtor called me and said, somebody want to sell you 12.5 acres of land. And I said, huh? Where? Foster Creek Business Park. Foster Creek Business Park. How much for a million dollars? A million dollars. Land on 35 go for a million an acre. They sell us 12.5 for one million. Before we built the building, the land itself appraised for $3 million without the building on it. So if they sold us a piece of land for $1 million, but it appraised for $3 million, they gave us, that's a real friend. But a, and listen, we got all we need all kind of friends, but a broke friend couldn't have did that for you. You need some friends. That's I know, come on, y'all play with. Me. You need some kingly friends. You need some land developer friends. <laughs> you need some. You need some friends that they couldn't have gave away two million if they ain't had two million to give away. And as a matter of fact, they gave us so much that the banker said that that can't be real. That land ain't worth what you think it is. And I said, well, why? He said, because nobody would be that generous. And, and, I, my, thought, my, and my, my thought was, well, you just don't, maybe you just don't understand what friendship is. Because I'm a friend of them and a friend of God. And y'all going to make me bust out. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. Woo! Look, and if you think it's good to be a friend with a land developer, be a friend with Jesus. Be a, be a friend with Jesus. He'll really hook you up. Hey, oh, y'all playing with me. Y'all not ready. He'll really hook you up. He'll, 
He'll make a way out of no way. He'll, he'll bless your socks off. Be a friend of Jesus. Woo! And if you're going to be a friend of Jesus, you need to be a friend like Jesus. You need to have a pure heart and a gracious mouth. Show yourself friendly. You have a whole lot of friends. Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. Teach this to your children. Isn't this good? Teach this to your children. Verse 12. The eyes of the Lord will keep watch over knowledge, but he frustrates the words of the unfaithful. Verse 12. Faithfulness produces knowledge. Faithfulness produces knowledge. Like you can know and not know. You can be aware and really not understand. You can be aware that this is a fact, but still not really understand the true value of it. You can know that God's word is true just because in your mind you have chosen to just think it's true. And you say, oh, it's true because God said it. But you don't know it's true because you obeyed it. It's a difference between knowing it's true factually and then knowing that it's true practically. But after you practiced it and it works and God blessed you because of it, now you're wise and there's no doubt in your mind that it's true because you already, you, you felt, you're not doing it because Big Mama said it was true or, or Mama said it was true or Pastor said it was true, but you're doing it because you've obeyed God and he's shown you that it's true. Now there's no doubt. And the only way you get to get true understanding and knowledge of God's truth is you got to do it for yourself. So if you want real knowledge and understanding, you have to be faithful. Faithfulness is the only opportunity you have to find out that God and his word is absolutely true. You got to be faithful to it. You can't, you can't live off my faithfulness. You got to be faithful on your own. All I can do is try to show you and be an example to you of what faithfulness looks like. This is what it looks like. This is how blessed you'll be if you're faithful. But then you got to go out and practice it for yourself. And then after you practice for yourself, teach your kids. But don't teach them, don't tell them, be faithful. Oh, go on down there to the church. I, 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 I'm not making it today. Can I get in? Some of y'all, the church, come on, church is a daycare. Just drop them off. Drop them off, <laughs> drop them off at the children's church. Give you a break for a couple of hours. Can I get in? Man? No, go in with them. Go in with them. Come on, real talk. Come on, y'all. It's time to stop playing. We out, we out here playing. We out here playing and we struggling, so let's just get it real. Because watch this, if you get kids that are grown and they don't know how to trust the Lord, it's going to be a rough situation. Huh? It's just going to be rough. So we're trying to get this right. Anybody know I'm right about it? Amen. Amen. All right, let's keep on moving. Oh, let me just tell you the part, the, the B part of 12. And so the opposite of it is true, no matter what, how intelligent people are, no matter how successful they are, no matter how much they think that they know, if they don't trust God, he still, he'll frustrate their understanding. He'll frustrate their words. He'll frustrate their, in other words, no matter how much they think they got working, God will ultimately make sure it doesn't work out. Just like God will make sure that if you're faithful, it will work out for you. He makes sure if they're unfaithful, it won't work out for him, for them. Uh, um, the, the, the people in the Tower of Babel, they were cold and they built and they worked together. They, they had a good plan. They used pitch. They, they, worked, they were so organized that thing went up. But they was trying to reach heaven on their own terms. And because they didn't trust God, God let them do all the work, get it very, very close, and then just kick the sand castle down. Get that out of here. Because he can't let unfaithfulness work. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Say it with me. Say, I don't want, I don't want the, Lord the Lord to put his sanctified foot, his sanctified foot. in my situation. <laughs> <laughs> but what I want, come on, what I want, I want. is the Lord, the Lord to put his anointed hand <laughs> on my situation. I, I want him to bless it. I don't want him to stomp it out. Amen. Try it if you want. I don't care. And just look at them. No matter how much they think they have at the end. The Bible says that's, 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 that's a, a proverb as well, is that the end thereof is disaster. It may look good for a long time, but the, but the end thereof is disaster. They got a whole lot of money, but all their kids is crazy. 
And the worst thing you want is some rich, crazy kids. Rich and crazy is dangerous. It's worse than broken crazy. Broken crazy, it, it just limits you in your crazy. But you know, you're crazy, but you're limited in how crazy you can get. Rich and crazy, <laughs> try all kinds of craziness. All right, I'm sorry. I went too far. All right, I got the roll. I got the roll. I'm out of time. I'm out of time. All right. Ooh, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. All right, y'all ready? Uh, verse 13. Y'all ready? The sluggard says, there's a lion outside. I'll be killed in the public square. All right, y'all ready? Pass this point. Verse 13, scared people don't win. You already determined you're going to lose if you're too scared to try. You can't be successful without taking risk. But let me tell you, oh man, this is some good old preaching, boy. Let me tell you what let me tell you, let me tell you what faith is. Faith is taking a serious risk on a guaranteed situation. <laughs> Woo, I feel good today. And y'all y'all get that? That's what faith is. Faith is it, so when God calls you to step out on faith. The, what, what makes you so nervous? Feel like it's a lion outside. Why you don't want to go out there? You don't want to do it. It's, oh, I'm just so nervous. Why you don't want to do it? It's because when God calls you to do something, most times to obey it, you have to put all of your personal reality at risk. You, got, you put it all on the line. And if God is not true, you're in trouble. And, and, and the people around you that don't think that God is true, they're telling you, you're a fool. You're going to you put yourself all the way out there like that? And so for faith, I had to quit jobs. I mean, I had to walk away from American Airlines. All my American Airlines friends told me I was a fool. One of them, he said, man, I went to talk to the manager, and I, I got you a leave of absence, and just in case that don't work out for you. And one of the guys said, man, he sent me the backpack. You going to school? I said, yeah. He said, what you going to school for? I said, theology. He said, what? I said, yeah. He said, well, don't you think you need to go for aircraft maintenance? Get your A&P just in case that don't work out for you. You have something to fall back on. I said, no, you need Jesus in case this don't work out for you. Because <laughs> what I got work better than what you got. I guarantee you, American Airlines will let you down before Jesus will. I guarantee you that. Anybody know I'm right about it? Won't he do it? And so you have to have faith. You know how much we put at risk. Like every step of the way of building this building, we talked about it yesterday, every step of building this building was a step of faith. Hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of thousands of dollars. And we went forward agreeing to the hundreds of thousands of dollars of the situation. We had no money. And we in line like we paid. We just in line. But we, we was on line on Jesus' credit. But this is the whole point. If he told you to do it, then it's a guarantee. Now, you got to be careful that what you think is faith or you think it was an anointing wasn't that you had a taco last night. Can I get an amen? You, you got, I got this strange feeling. No, that was a taco. Yeah. <laughs> you need to be in a relationship long enough with God where you start to develop a God language and you know what he speaks. But if he, if he tells you, he cannot fail. So, and, and he'll always tell you to do something that puts you in over your head. So because he said it, it's a guarantee. But it causes you to put everything of your personal life on complete risk. So the people, it look risky. So you're taking a risk on a guarantee. It's a risk in the, it's a risk in the natural, but it's a guarantee in the spiritual. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all not ready? But you got to be brave to be a strong Christian. You can't be scared. If you're going to be a witness and tell people about Jesus, scared people don't witness. Uh, 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 um, um, I was kind of wondering, do you go to church anywhere? Um, excuse me, excuse me. I was kind of wondering, you know, were you, uh, you know, do you serve the Lord? You know? No, you got to be bold. Hey, girl, where you go to church? You don't go nowhere? Oh my God. 
Um, you got insurance on your car, but you don't have none on your life? You need, some, you need some eternal life insurance. That's all salvation is. Not mutual of Omaha. It's called Jesus. Can I get an amen? Eternal. All right, let's keep going. Y'all ready? All right, verse 14. We got to get out of here. I'm doing good. All right, verse 14. We got to get out. All right, y'all ready? The mouth of an adulterous woman is a deep pit. And a man who is under the Lord's wrath falls into it. That is deep. Somebody said, woo. Somebody just say, ouch. All right, let me clean that up. All right, y'all ready? I, I can't clean it up, it's the Bible, but let me just make it a little more palatable. All right, um, past this point for 14, the unfaithful fail. So let's clean it up. Um, not clean it up, make it more clear because you can't clean up with God. He knows what you're talking about. Watch this. Um, if a woman is an adulterous woman, she's unfaithful to her husband. If a man is under the wrath of God, it's because he's unfaithful to God. So whether you're unfaithful to God or you're unfaithful to people, you're going to fail. If you're unfaithful to God, it's impossible to be faithful to people. Because only being faithful to God will he empower you to be faithful to people. So the opposite of it is true. If you're faithful to God and faithful to people, you'll win. But if you're unfaithful to God and unfaithful to people, you'll lose. That's all I got. Can I get an amen? Somebody say hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and just tell them, be more faithful in 2022. Tell them that is our theme. More faith, less fear this year. If you're more faithful to God, he'll help you to be more faithful to people. If you're faithful, more faithful to God and more faithful to people, you'll win. But if you're unfaithful to God, you'll be unfaithful to people and you'll lose. Hallelujah. Boy, I cleaned that up good, didn't I? All right. It was like, where you going with that one, Pastor? All right. <laughs> Fifteen. <laughs> Woo! This is a good preacher at the key. We out. Folly is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline will drive it far away. Right. Right. Hallelujah. Uh, Pass this point. Spare the rod. Time out don't work. If you give them time out, just give them more time to plot what they're going to do next. <laughs> While they're sitting in time out, they just mad, huh? I got something for her. That's when they start calling you by your first name and calling you out of your name. Barbara done got on my nerves. I got something for Barbara. Whole <laughs> time that they mad. Time out. Look, <laughs> this is the text. This is the text. You brought this Bible with you. It said folly is in their heart already. They, they got in their heart to, to act a fool. That's all folly means, that you, <laughs> you act a fool. Can I get an amen? They got a desire in their heart as kids to act a fool. And time out doesn't drive that out. That just gives them time to think about how mad they are that you said something. I can't believe it. Wait till I get out of this room. I got something for Barbara. But that belt is in the text. Y'all don't get mad at me. We taking it easy because it's, it's in a ride. A belt better than a ride. Y'all from the country, some of them, and they wanted a belt or a ride. It was a branch. And then they had that theology. They had that drive it out of you theology. Go get it. Go pick your own. You try to come back with one this big. They're like, boy, get out of here. Go. For, me, for me, I'm from the East Coast. So I wasn't in the country. I wasn't all that. So it wasn't a belt. There wasn't no ride. But I, look, mine was them Hot Wheel racetracks. Y'all don't know nothing about that. If you're young, just go Google it. If you're young, go Google it. I remember my uncle brought one for Christmas. I was like, player, you can take that one back to the store. I don't, I don't, it ain't worth the fun. Can I get an amen? It's going to be a little fun. A little very hot. They got a whole one of them little orange plastic Hot Wheel. Woo! You hear them coming through the air. You hear them, like you hear them. They be whistling, they be whistling. Oh, you already know. You, you can hear when it's coming. You're like, this is going to hurt. Pow! Ooh. 
that plastic, that rubber, that plastic on the skin. Woo! Mama, I won't do that no more. I'm sorry, Mama. I'm sorry. They got foolishness in their heart, but a, 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 a discipline will drive it out. Yeah. It's in the driving far away, and it's the intent. You're not beating them to get back at them. You're beating them to improve them. You're letting them know that foolishness is not tolerated in this house. Yeah. Time out, don't do that. They just give them time to plot how to do something else. Can I get an amen? amen? All right, we out with this one. We out with this one. Verse 16, we out. Teach this to your children. Isn't this good stuff? Amen. Teach this to your children. The one who oppresses the poor to increase his wealth and the one who gives gifts to the rich both come. Watch this. They both come to poverty. Ooh, y'all don't even know how deep they were. They got rich because they took advantage of others to get rich. But God says, if that's the way they did it, I'll make sure that they'll be broke for it's over. Now, ooh, I'm going to mess y'all up. Y'all ain't ready for this preaching. We got to end on this. They may never be broke financially, but God can break them in health. And, and it doesn't make any sense to have a bank full of money and no health to spend it. Can I get an amen? Let me give you the point. The greedy becomes the needy. If you, if you try to take advantage of others to get ahead, God says that's not the way he works. He won't bless that. Love the needy. Love those that are hurting. If you're trying to get ahead, do it God's way. Any other way than God's way won't work. But if you do, if you do it God's way, if you'll be generous, if you'll be a giver, he'll bless you. You can't outgive giving. You can't beat God giving. If you'll go to school, if you do it the right way. See, I just came from a neighborhood where we just, we were into the shortcuts. Like, I just didn't want to do it the legitimate way. I, it, that take too long. You're going to go to school for four years and come out and make 20000 a year? Like, me and my boys get 20000 a week. Until we get caught and then we're in jail for 20 years. And broke. You was paid for about three, four years. You had it going on. Can I get an Amen. But for the next 30 years, you locked up and broke. Can I get an amen? Because what you're doing, if you're selling drugs, you're taking advantage of other people so that you can be successful. And God says, you can, start, you can do whatever you want. You can do it outside of God's way, but he'll never let it work. Teach this to your children. Do things the right way, and God will bless you. Let's pray. Merciful Father, Lord, we love you and we praise you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for helping us to be more faithful parents. You brought us a mighty, mighty long way. And help us to raise our children and train them up in the way they should go. And you made us a promise when they get old, they'll trust you for themselves. That is our desire for all of our children. Before we leave this earth, that they'll be able to trust you and lean on you for themselves. Because that's when their lives will be blessed. But you've given us the responsibility not to be their friends, not to be their, their siblings. We're not their siblings. We are their parents. We're their trainers. And it's our job to train us up. And thank you for giving us these 16 points of how to invest in our children, how to teach our children so when they get older, they'll live by these principles and be blessed by you. Uh, we just bless every parent in here to just go to another level. If they just getting started, help them understand it's not too late. It, but the best way to become a better parent is to become a better person. The best way to, to get faithful children is to be a faithful parent. And so help all of us to do that. We lead our children by example. They need to see us praying. They need to see us coming to church. They need to see us studying our Bible. They need to see us having a pure heart. They need to see us speaking graciously. They need to see you change our lives, and then they'll know that you're powerful and want you to change their lives. So help us to be better parents. Whatever you hear about and I close it, there's somebody here today, you're not sure that if you died today, you would go to heaven. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. And you need to get it right. The day is the day of salvation. If you're not saved, but you need to get it right, nobody's looking. Just put your hand in the air. Hallelujah. You're not saved, but you need to get it right. Just put your hand in the air. Don't, please don't leave here unsaved. If you're not sure, we're not going to ask you to say anything. We just want to take you to the back and introduce you to Jesus. If you need to get it right, put your hand in the air. Anybody? All right, y'all. All right. God is good. Um, let's give God a hand and clap of praise. Thank you so much. Watch this. Thank you so much. 
hope you're already saved. And, uh, but if you are already saved and you don't have a church home that's conducive for your growth, we want to open up the doors of the church, or the key church, and invite you to join. Doors of the church are open. Anybody want to join? Doors of the church are open. Anybody want to join? Hey, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. There you go. There you go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Deacon. Oh, hey. Look at the Lord. Look at the Lord. Look at the Lord. Two families. Hey. Amen. 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 Two beautiful families. Two beautiful families. Amen. Won't the Lord do it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, God. And uh, we have a gentleman, and, and this is God is doing this at our church. Uh, Reverend Thompson, we have a gentleman who's pastored the church for 20 years, and uh, now he's in Texas and ready to come and join the key. And just like Reverend Thompson, God and, and your wife, God has developed you, and you have a gift, and we will make room for it here. And what a beautiful family. Hey, y'all. Y'all look great. We love y'all. Welcome to the key with our rights, privileges, and responsibilities. If y'all go over there, come on, go see our deacons, and they will... Get you connected. Amen. Come on, y'all. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. What an awesome, awesome, awesome God. I'm telling you, God is doing something. That praise and worship was off the chain, and um, it's exciting to have our children. You church, come on, y'all. Get flyers. Uh, make sure we have flyers out in the foyer. Uh, make sure you get some out of my office. Get some out of my office. Make sure that we have a lot. Get them on the way out. It's time to push. Let's push. Let's invite. All right, it's called reclamation. That's when we, pe we invite, we try to get back what, that which was lost. So if we know members and they haven't been here for a while. Just encourage them. Tell them you don't want to miss what God is doing. There's something that's happening right now. Children's church is open. Youth church is open. Nursery is open. You don't have an excuse. Come on, bring the kids back. Because they need to raise their kids up in the way they should go. Like if, you, if they don't have them in church now, what, why do they think they're going to want to go later? And then when they have your grandkids and they're not going to church, you somewhere crying. Y'all need to go to church. Well, if you would have brought them, it would have been easier. Can I get an amen? I'm just, that's not, this is not even rocket science, y'all. This is real simple. So let's do that. And then also, there's new people. People move into the metro. People move into Alliance area in this area in the droves, and they're looking for you. So let's just get some flies. Let's pass them out. Be faithful. Let's pass them out. And uh, God is good all the time. Come on, y'all. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. All right, all right. If you want to be a blessing to the Key Church and you're worshiping online, um, you can download an app called Givelify, and you can look for the key church and you'll see my picture and then you can put your debit or credit card information into that secure account and giving becomes easy and convenient. If you don't feel comfortable with giving online, you can always mail your offering into the key church, PO Box 50793, Fort Worth, Texas, 76105. If you're worshiping with us in person, there are giving boxes at each corner and you can, there's an envelope there, you can leave your offering on the way out. A um, couple of things I forgot. If you because we hadn't figured out how to do it so thank you for being patient with us and we haven't baptized in about a year and a half so if you are in need of baptism the first sunday of march we will baptize so amen so if you need to be baptized talk to one of the ushers let them know let them get your information uh, we'll let you know we have a few more weeks till we get there but we'll have baptism on uh, the first of March, first Sunday of March. So we're excited about that. If you are worshiping with us online and you need to be saved, uh, the Bible says the day is the day of salvation. Even in the comfort and safety of your own home, you can give your life to the Lord. If that is the case and you uh, need to get it right, Romans 10 and 9 says, if you believe in your heart, God raised Jesus from the dead. And if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. And if you need to do that, just bow your head, be sincere with the Lord. You can repeat after me, say, dear father, thank you for loving me so much. You sent your son Jesus to die for my sins. I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. Forgive me of my sins, and I promise to do my best to obey you. Thank you, Lord, for saving me right now. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, we want to welcome you to the family of God. Come on, Key Church. Amen. Hallelujah. If you gave your life to the Lord, go on to our website, look for I Am New, and then look for Get Connected, and send us a message. Somebody will call you, get you connected to the church, and walk you through your salvation. All right. God is good all of the time. Come on, somebody, and give us our benediction. Please stand. Please stand.
So, like I said, in this animated existence that we call life, there's only one parent, and it's God. So when pastor's reading from Proverbs, that includes us. Yes, we teach it to our children, but we need to be practicing it. Like pastor said, the kids need to see you doing it, not saying it. Bow your heads. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we just love you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the word. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, that it penetrated our hearts, dear Lord. And we, we just, not just penetrate our hearts, but let it, comes out, let it come out in the way we walk and the way we talk, dear Heavenly Father. Our attitude, the way we approach situations and people, the way we respond to situations and people, dear Heavenly Father. Let everything that we do is glorify, to, to glorify you, dear Lord. And that not only just us, dear Heavenly Father, but people that are surrounding us, people that we see that shining light in our hearts and in our minds, dear Heavenly Father. And allow it, dear Heavenly Father, to draw people closer to you, dear Heavenly Father, that you may be glorified and praised once again. And we pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you continue to bless us and lead us and guide us and direct us, correct us, and protect us through all situations and all circumstances. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. You are dismissed. Please uh, exit out the...